My name is Munes Rahmandust. I'm in charge for the tomorrow's workshop, actually, for the painted tile or decorative tile. But uh, today, um, as we are husband and wife, we share our responsibilities. <laughs> First of all, I say, uh, I mean, I'm really uh, embarrassed to talk in front of Dr. Uh, Kazempur and Mr. Musavi, who are the real masters of this <laughs> art. But we, the funny part, the interesting part, was that we, they meet each other here, and they found that they were, I mean, their grand-grandfathers were cousins. I will give you some general information about this. The, this workshop is going to be uh, run in three separate parts. The first part, I will give you general information. The second part, you will try to cut the pieces yourself according to your desired pattern. And the third part, we have pre-cut some tiles according to that plans in front of you. And you will try to assemble them mm -hmm. and make the real file the real art piece. And if you had any questions about any part of the process, you may ask Dr. Kazampur or Mr. Musavizadeh anytime. And they are real masters, and they can a answer you very well. <laughs> Who knows what is mu Muarraq tile? I think you have seen it in Turkey. I'm not yeah. sure. Something like this. Have you ever seen it? Pieces mm -hmm. of small pieces of tiles attached together to make a whole pattern. They can be simple geometric cut pattern like this, or they may be floral like this. I mean, made of flowers and arabesque or geometric patterns. So, muarraq tile is consists of I mean, consists of small chips, ceramic chips that they are arranged and put together, and then they are attached together using gypsum or cement. And there are similar in nature uh, t different tiles, like the modern ceramics that you see, for example, in front of the hotels they make. Big. But the, there, that way, they are not fully uh, attached together. Or the Moroccan zelic, zelic tiling style in Morocco. They are similar in nature, but the way that they are done and the result is different. The main difference between the Persian type of Muarraq tile and the English and Moroccan counterparts is that um, in the traditional Iranian architecture, the art, um, they are put from their negative side. There is a map. There are numbers. There are codes. Look at this. This is a real one. Uh, they put numbers. They put codes. And they, then they cut them. I will explain later. They put them on the tile, they cut it, and then they have some marks to see to indicate that this one should be attached from this side to the other one. And um, they make the whole pattern this way. And this art is considered a luxurious art because it's very expensive in terms of the skillful artisan who should do it, the time that is required to cut all this with your hand, and uh, the manpower required, it is considered very expensive. And therefore, it is one of those forgotten arts that are, that's not very common to be used. But it is luxurious, and it is very expensive, and it is very valuable. For example, in Iran, there are a very limited number of, I mean, perhaps only 10 families who are still doing this art. And the two of them are Mr. Musavizadeh's family and Mr. Kazanpur's family. Uh, and they're very limited. Look, for example, 10, and two of them are now here. And it's very, <laughs> I mean, it's very lucky for you, I think. That's why uh, we choose this topic, because we have, we could have choose other decorations and but this one I think have to be focused have to be more um, considered not to be forgotten the raw material for making these tiles includes limited colors not all colors uh, of tiles like this 
this tile may be uh, glazed like this with color or they may be raw like the other side but not not this one actually okay. but um, and also gold color white the limited number of colors that I brought some samples here it requires a cutting diamond hatchet as this one that you have on your the file here you cannot imagine these small flowers in these parts, the small flowers were all cut by hands and put together and gypsum on the behind and very, very, um, I mean, hard to do. Uh, this art was created about 300 years ago uh, in late Ilkhanid period and Taimurid period in Iran. One of the good points uh, about this um, type of tiling is that it is very durable, it's very strong. Uh, I will tell you later that how they make it strong, but compared to other t types of tiling, for example, this painted tile that you also have in Izmir, I think, um, they are not pieces, big one put together, but the small ones inside each other and like puzzles, and they are very strong. Uh, another highlight is that they have a map that they have to put the tiles over this map from their negative side, they put it upside down. And in case the pattern is very large, they divide it into smaller squares. They make square, 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 and then they put it together. And they have a, a flat surface, a glass or a gypsum flat surface. And when they put it like this, for example, suppose that there is map under this. And you put the tiles, and then you use some wires or ropes to make it stronger, it's like uh, mm, composites, the reinforcing elements. And they put gypsum. This one can also be a handle and also protect it from getting apart. I will explain the steps. Uh, first of all, the pattern should be designed and the colors should be decided. For example, for this one that I just showed you, this is the pattern. It's a very long one for around a dome, for example. And then they are glued with a special glue that you will have on your tables. Uh, the solvent is water. So that when the, everything is done, you can wash it and uh, they don't stick again to the uh, steel, uh, to the tile and they will remove it very easily. They are uh, glued to the surface of the tile, like this. They are cut it and glued to the surface of the tile. You have the numbers here and also there. Therefore, when you want to rep reproduce it, you put it this way on this when, when it is cut. Then using these hatchets, it is cut out. For example, first, the main parts are cut. Then you come to the smaller details. And then finally, using this file, the rough parts are And this step, I mean, this, this requires several steps to cut the bigger parts and then make it smaller and detailed, more detailed, and then uh, filing the rough sides and desire, I mean, reaching the one, for example, if you want to cut this Big parts, you use this hatchet. The bigger part, the smaller part. And uh, for smaller uh, inside parts, for example, from out, you use this carving tool to take out these parts. And then the next part is categorizing them. Because consider a whole dome and uh, around it, and a lot of green, a lot of blue. For example, uh, based on the um, colors and numbers, they divide these millions of pieces and like this. But, and then you need this uh, working flat surface to put these upside down uh, according to the plan. And sometimes when, for example, this one, your plan is uh, not transparent, they use uh, oil to make it transparent and put the, um, use the other side, the negative side. Too. And then it is done. You have seen it. it's the negative side of the pattern. And 
you have to put the wires and the, or the ropes. Previously, they were using ropes. And gypsum is that the whole back part is covered with gypsum. To glue them together. Depending on the weather, also cement can be used. And then the papers are removed from the uh, surface of the tiles. And the prepared um, piece of tile is, uh, goes for the installation. Sometimes, uh, in order to, for example, when, it's, when it is supposed to travel a long way, they don't remove the papers. When it goes there, they wash it there. The and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.